Good morning and welcome to the show. How are you today? Hey, Jason. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's good to see you twice in two days. And I as, know, uh, we'll it's, talk it's about always in a minute. so fun. Yeah, well, and today we're doing it virtually. We're seeing each other over Zoom meeting. Yesterday, we actually saw each other in person, which we will talk about in a minute. So I know we've got a lot of stuff to cover today. You've got a lot of goodness to share with the audience. So let's just kick it off. So first things first, Casey, love if you'd provide us with an introduction of who you are, where you are in the world, and anything you'd like to share to get us started. Sure. So my name is Casey and Gordon. I am from Jamaica, the beautiful island of Jamaica. Um, so every now and then I say something and it comes out with an accent. I'm like, I'm Jamaican. It's fine. Um, yeah, exactly. But it's great. Exactly. Uh, I'm a financial advisor by training, uh, 20 years of experience. But lately I've had this call to write and I've been blogging for three and a half years. I've published a book and I'm just super excited about this journey that I'm on. Nice, nice. Well, we're, I think we'll, we'll talk about all that today. And where are you at in the world today? Like, where are we doing this episode from? So I'm in my home office. So it's Friday. It, it's freezing outside. So I decided it is. whether I wanted to go into the office office or just work from the home office today. And I'm from the home office in Valley Stream, New York. Yeah, no, it is. Um, so we're recording this episode in mid January. And yesterday, I think and we'll talk about how we know each other. I think yesterday, I didn't even have a jacket. I just had a blazer and it was like 50 degrees yesterday morning. And I yep. think today it's like 21 degrees or something here in the New York tri-state area. So um, quite a cold front that comes in. We're not, we're not that good at that here anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're from Jamaica. I'm from Minnesota. So I like the cold, but like, I don't like the 25 degree shift in 24 hours. So no, it definitely um, dropped last night overnight. And I looked at the weather this morning. I'm like, Oh, my daughter's layering up today. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Casey and I know each other. We're actually in a networking group together. We meet once a week in <clears throat> it's a uh, master networks and um, uh, one of my other guests that I've had on the show and, and some more people I will have on the show are other people in our group that we know. We're all friends and we meet once a week in Midtown Manhattan. It's really fun. I think I was the, either the first, I was the first official person to join. And I believe Casey, you were the second official person to join because we have another person who was there before us, but didn't officially join until the end of the year. I will right. not call him out by name, but we he knows who he is. If he's listening name. to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little joke we use because you, because we use his office to meet. So it's actually, he was providing us great value. So yeah, I think we were the, really the first, first, first two people to right. join the group. And it's been really fun to, to build the group out together. Absolutely. So in terms of a tradition I have here on the show is I like to talk about our first impressions of each other. And since it's my show and I get to make the rules, you get to tell me what your first impression was of me. And then, of course, I'll do the same for you. You know what? I'm going to have to have my own show so that I can make up my own rules as I go along, too. Um, but the first impression, and I've kind of thought about that as I've listened to your other podcasts. Like, what was my first impression of you? So, of course, I walked in. I think the first, do you remember, I don't know if you remember that, but our very first meeting, we had, what, four Jasons in one room of, what, six or seven of us, right? I think a total yeah. of. Yep, there were a total of seven of us and four Jasons, which was um, like that ratio is crazy. First impression, uh, pretty outgoing, um, but I think I more got to know you on our very first one-on-one -on -one call where we decided to take it from or meeting as is our tradition for Master Networks you meet somebody, it's just great to have that bonding experience with them. And we had our first Zoom call and it was just so much fun. Like we just let our guards down and had a real conversation. And of course you offered to, to do your coaching thing on me, which I still <laughs> value. you. <laughs> coaching thing on me. Yes. It sounds like, like a, like, it sounds, it just sounds like it's a cult. Like I'm like, I'm going to do this coaching thing on you. Yeah, I think it's like, hmm, I should do this exercise with you. But I, I'm super, super appreciative of the exercise that yeah, we went through. Yeah, of course. Through. <laughs> that's great. That's funny. I, uh, that's so good. Like, do that coaching thing on you. Like, <laughs> like, you didn't have a choice. Like, I was like weaving some sort of magic around you. I don't you. know if I really had a choice. You're like, we should you do did. this. And I'm like, okay, yes, yes, whatever you want. <laughs> You're right. I, 
it's funny because I said a couple of keywords and suddenly I had complete control over what Casey was going to do. It's amazing. It's an amazing <laughs> skill that I have. Um, that's, that's a, I love that reframe. Um, well, good. So my, so my first impression of you is you are a, just a warm, friendly, positive energy person. Uh, and you exude, and I think we talked about this in our exercise, like for me, the, the word that comes to mind, and I think anybody who knows you say like, you're a spirit, like you bring it, you bring a spirit of uh, like who you are, what you want to create in the world. And just a really positive energy it was like, I'm like, I'm like, when I met you, I was like, oh, that's somebody I want to get to know. Like, oh, I'm so glad she's here in the group. Because, you know, like for people who do networking, it, it, that's not always the case. Right. You know, like, Agreed. And, and we've, yeah, we've talked about this with our, you know, with our group right now. Like we've built this really nice camaraderie and, you know, positive giving energy. But that's, you know, a lot of networking groups, you don't always get that. And I think, you know, like we're all, we're all in the place we're supposed to be for a reason. Like I think just like us being together and then like adding to this group um, is just like a good natural fit. So that was like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's. Like I looked at you, I'm like, I'm gonna like her. Like it's that simple. Like, yep, that's oh, gonna be thank it. That's you. me one that's me that's me one of my people. And then yeah, you know, you no, know and even yeah. something that you said on the our very first call, it just kind of allowed me to step back. And I actually went Googling. Um, you said a couple of things that ended our call about like my profession, who I who I was and what I brought to the room, even before we actually did the exercise. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Um eh. And I, and I I jokingly say this, but I'm a unicorn when I put everything, you know, and we'll talk about this more about the journey, yeah. like what's done or whatever else. Um, but, you know, I think something that some things that you said just kind of really came to the forefront of my mind as nice. I pulled out my best and trusted friend, Google. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and I, I, yeah. I just want to tell you, like my first impression, you've only let me down a little bit since then. It's, you're, you know, it was about nine. About ninety percent, so very good. <laughs> okay, how about ninety-five? I'm like, I'm not you. I don't you. like failing, so I'll like give you ninety-five. Good, but how about ninety-five? And what did I do? That's right. As we'll probably talk about today, you were a you were a heck of a student with a lot of letters behind your name. So <laughs> we know that you're we know you're a very high achiever and like don't like to fail at anything as well. So, um, so are you gonna tell me what I failed at though? Like no, would I let I, you down? I, I am <laughs> definitely not. I am definitely not going to do that. No, no, you, you've exceeded my expectations as we've gotten to know each other. And I have very high expectations. So thank you for that. Mm. All right, Casey, let's get into it today. We've got a lot to talk about and you get to get on the hot seat for the next hour. Well, most, most of the next hour. Okay. First question for you is what is something that you nerd out about? So I like talking to people about their finances. I know it's my profession. But I've like really been thinking about it. I'm like, I get so excited to talk about their finances. And now the fact that I'm able to not just talk about finances, but also talk about the faith aspect of putting it all together. Mm -hmm. So I realized that more and more as I'm having conversations to be able to do something from a different perspective, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is making me so happy. And I also really, really love reading. So I prefer to read than to watch TV. So I prefer, like, the TV's on, but mm -hmm. that's because my daughter has it on in the background mm -hmm. and she's doing whatever, but I much prefer to read more than to watch TV. So I don't know anything about the latest shows, so I'm usually out of those conversations. Gotcha. All right, well, we won't, we won't talk about the latest Netflix shows today then. No, I'm, then, I'm the wrong then... person. I don't even have Netflix. <laughs> don't tell anyone that. <laughs> oh, you just outed yourself. You did not have Netflix. So Netflix. No, Netflix. I had it, and I'm like, I'm not using this. I'll just cancel it. So, <laughs> so yes, Netflix, I'm if you're the only person who, on the planet who does not have Netflix, nor has access to somebody else's Netflix. Right. So you know what's going to happen now is the next time you go on Facebook, you're going to be suddenly served with a bunch of Netflix ads. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like funny. only nine ninety nine to come back. Why aren't you exactly. coming back? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I have a question for you about the, you know, say talking about finances. So. That's obviously a very broad, that's a very broad topic. Is there anything specifically within finances? Like what's the thing that you talk to your clients about the most that like really nerds you out or geeks you up? Like what's the, what's the topic where you're just like, oh man, this is my, this is the, this is the genre inside or the niche inside of the financial discussion that really gets me excited. Planning for their financial future. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, when I just think about some of the things that I started doing when I was younger, 
that's allowing me to do the thing that I'm doing now, um, it would not have happened without, well, I didn't actually know it at the time, but without like planning um, and being consistent about what I was doing. So those are some of the things that now as I'm talking to clients, um, especially those who are in the earlier stages, um, just what is the, what does retirement look like for you? Like, even when I did that presentation, it's not so much from a dollars and cents. It's also, okay, what, what do you envision for the future and how are you going to get there and yeah. starting to put plans in place that will really get you to that point from where you are currently to where you want to go. Yeah. Uh, the advice that I, like I've been, so I haven't always been perfect with my money. I mean, who's right. perfect with it, but the one thing I've always done is 10% for retirement from the day I got out of college. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, um, so I think like the, the thing that was instilled in me or the thing that I took on that I've any financial planner you talk to is like, do it now, whatever age right. you are, start now. Exactly. It's really fun. It's really fun. You know, it's really fun to like, look at your balance and be like, Oh, wow. The market did well this year. Like that's, that's a good sum of money when I retire. But then I, but then the next thing that comes up for me is I'm like, Oh, but that's an IRA, which means I have to pay tax on it. Ugh. <laughs> my like, that's not all my money. And you're still relatively, relatively young. So there's still growth for some yes. number of years. And, yes, but yeah, true. to that, to that point, it's like starting now, starting where you are and yeah. just being consistent about it. Yeah. So it's like the dollar that like, if you, I think if you're 22, I read that if you put a, yeah, every dollar is actually worth like something like between six and $8 or something along those lines or even yeah, more. So there are a whole lot of theories and yes, this is where I feel like the nerdy starts coming in, but it's really about starting early and really investing it in a way that makes sense for you, but also being aggressive because you also have that longer time horizon. No one plan fits anyone. So I can't tell you that your dollar today is going to be worth $6, but it's that consistency that's going to help you. Wait, so I want to, I want to clarify something. So we can't hold you accountable to some exact financial advice in the podcast today. Like we can't hold you liable for that. You know what? I'm going to guarantee all your results. <laughs> <We're not. laughs> which I, which I believe is actually like specifically illegal. Exactly. Or like it's, it's not, always a I, yeah. So let, let's go back. Let's, let's put some disclaimers on this. <laughs> Past performance is no guarantee of future performance. Perfect. Right. So exactly. That's the biggest disclaimer. Um, however, and I cannot, I will not give very general advice to anyone sure. on their specific situation. I can't, oh, yeah. I, I will not. And, and I always say this when I do presentations, if someone starts telling you the solutions before you tell them what your problems are, you should be running, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah. the only way that someone can give you, um, or start giving you guidance is if they know the things that are important to you. Yeah, exactly. So that's, one of things, that's definitely one of the places I start. But what I can say with certainty is the earlier you start, the longer time horizon you have, and the more likely you're able to make your goals when you're consistent and disciplined about what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Good. So. But I'm not what? a nerd otherwise. Not. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see. And also, nerds are great. It's like the it's like the older you get, the more the the more the things that you're nerd out about becomes the things that you actually make money doing, which is so funny. Which is good, right? Which it is means great. That yeah, you're enjoying it. E exactly. So, right. um, so what's something that is inside of your comfort zone that might be outside of somebody else's? Mm. I think going up to complete strangers and starting conversations with them. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I've done that. So I like to say I'm reserved. No feedback, no comments. <laughs> that's not really my experience of you. I'm yeah, not, you're so not like, a, you're not like a crazy. Yeah. You're so not like, like a like crazy in your face person. You're just more like you're outgoing and like light and bubbly, but you're not like a, like, whoa, too much. But I wouldn't right. say that you're also somebody who's like, demure sitting in the corner with nothing to say. That's not my experience either. That's definitely me, right? I'm going to be sitting in the corner with nothing to say. Um, so, and I, I love to tell this story. My mom, I guess when I was a teenager, we 
take the bus. I take the bus to Canada by myself. Mm -hmm. So she took me to Port Authority and puts me on the bus. And she's like, don't talk to anyone. So I sit in the front seat and the person next to me, she said before, and she's, of course, she's just putting me on the bus, you know, to ride the bus to go see my grandmother. She said, before the bus even pulls out, I'm already in conversation with someone. And of course, yeah. I spoke a couple of hours with them. Um, so I tend to talk to strangers a little bit easier. I think it kind of brings the, the guard down mm -hmm. um, around people, which is somewhat in my comfort zone. But sometimes I'm, again, because I think I'm reserved. Um, but also because I, the way I show up, people tend to talk to me and tell me all kinds of stuff. Yeah, 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 makes sense. I'm the uh, so I, I'm literally run a podcast called Talking to Cool People. I love talking to people all day, right. except I am the person on an airplane who will have like the noise canceling headphones and a hoodie on, and like don't bother me. Like I'm just <laughs> or the subway. Like I don't, I don't know what I don't know what it is. That's like my one place. Where I'm like, nope, just don't. I, I like I don't like talking to people on the plane, which I know is probably a, a miss for like great connections with people, but I just right. don't. I'm just now, now, no, thank you. I mean, yes, I mean, of course, so yeah. yeah, actually, and sometimes I feel more impressed to do it, even if it's out of my comfort zone and I don't necessarily want to do it. And I'll share this story. So my faith plays a big part in who I am. Right. And yeah. I remember a couple of years ago, it was like the beginning of the year. I sat in the middle seat on the train. And of course, nobody wants to talk to you on the commute in uh, no. to Manhattan. Um, and this guy's reading his book and he's reading a devotional and I'm like, okay, so he believes in, you know, in, in God. So I take out my little business card for my blog and I give it to him. And of course he looks at it and he's like, okay, yeah, sure. And sticks it in his pocket afterwards. He, you know, maybe about 10 minutes away from Penn station, he starts telling me, you know, like, yeah, he's been reading this book. It's his second time read through. His mom had given it to him, whatever else. Fast forward sometime, even yesterday, I, I text him because we sometimes take the train together mm -hmm. um, or we're on the same time train. I text him and I'm like, are you on the train? He's like, yeah, but I'm farther back. I'm like, well, you're waiting for me. Of course, me, the bossy person I am. He and I have become friends over the years. And as we walk, I told him that he was walking with me. We're walking to our networking group and he was walking to work. And when we parted, he hugged me and kissed me. And he's just like, he kissed me on the cheek and he's just like, I love you, Casey. And I'm just like, the relationship or not even thinking that it would turn into a relationship and a friendship, um, some guy I met on the train just out of nowhere because our connection and it's very a faith-based connection, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now we have come so far together as friends and to the point where he expressed that strong emotion. I'm like, we couldn't be more different if you like, if you tried. Yeah, <laughs> you know? oh, that's so super cool. It's it's getting that out of that comfort zone. And for me, watching, especially when I feel like God told me to do it, it's mm -hmm. a little bit crazy. Um, but seeing how that end result looks. That's awesome. You're inspiring me to perhaps not be such a curmudgeon. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's we'll, okay. we'll I see. I want to be a curmudgeon sometimes. Trust yeah. me. Maybe yeah. Maybe I could teach you how to do that. Um, <laughs> So now the reverse of that question. So what's something that is outside of your comfort zone that's likely inside of somebody else's? Hmm. Outside of my comfort zone. Um, I think going back to, you know, some people will watch movies, like they'll veg out on TV all day long. I mean, and it's not, a major thing but it's just like I literally even when I'm sick I can't even lay in bed and watch tv all day long it's not my thing I lay mm -hmm. in bed and read um but not my thing to watch tv like that and I mean that's not major but I think a lot I read social media where a lot of people will be like in the latest shows and I'm just like oh sorry no not not my thing yeah I think what I'm <clears throat> what I'm inferring from all that as well is something that's likely outside of your comfort zone is just like um, not doing anything. Like you're, you're always doing something, feeling productive. Yes. No, it's a good, it's, it's not a good thing it's or a bad thing. thing. It's just thing, how you're built. But I've yeah. also learned that sometimes you have to, 
step back in order to be super productive. And, you know, like that's part of where meditating comes in, right? Yeah. Slowing down so that you can really move forward. And I, I think people just choose to slow down in a different way. Yeah. Or, so or, or, I like to yeah, be productive, yeah. but I'm also learning to take a step back and slow down and appreciate where I've come from so that I can really see what I want to do next. Yeah. Awesome. So I know that you do a lot of public speaking is one of the things that you, you do and speak on a variety <laughs> of topics, financial and other things. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to give you a hypothetical situation. I have the ability and our friend Marie, our mutual friend Marie, as you saw, like one of the logistics of how this is actually going to work. We're going to just pretend this is going to work. So Marie, if you're listening, yes, thank you for being the only guest I've ever had who's like, wait, that's not realistic. I can make wait, it happen. I did hear that. And was, I was actually laughing. I was laughing I'm too. Like, I probably would not even have thought that. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's uh, for magic and possibility. And I'm the <laughs> wizard. Uh, so Casey, you have five minutes to deliver a speech to the whole wide world. What would you give your speech on and why? Oh, my goodness. Um, I liked what Mar uh, Marie said a lot um, with just being kinder to each other. Um, but going back to the thing I nerd out about, it's that finance thing, right? It, it, it's planning. It's, um, I don't believe you have to deprive yourself of everything to be able to get to your financial goals, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I would talk to while I, I have the audience of the whole world or the U.S. or wherever my ge geographic region is, right? You yeah. Might yep. an accent, didn't you? Didn't you? Um, but wherever that is, it's starting where you are, starting early, start creating a plan, like look where you want your future to go and start thinking about the ways that you're going to get there. Um, start making those connections and don't lose them, you know, because I think connections as we're finding in our networking group is so important. Yeah. You know, I would never have imagined that I would be talking to or talking on a podcast where I'm considered a cool person, right? But you've <laughs> created a forum and I'm happy to be a part of it and to share in that with you. Yeah. But the more we broaden for horizon, um, I think the more um, opportunities and also just being kind to people, mm -hmm. really taking a step back and being genuinely kind. Um, I have this saying that, or actually I've read it, um, Court Flint said it years ago and I've been using it for a long time now. It's like, you can't give away kindness. It always comes back to you. So mm, be kind. Like be kind to others and you don't know what people are going through. You see people and I think they show up um, on a daily basis. You don't know what it took for them to put one pants on or whatever else. However, for them to get dressed, they get out of the house. So just yeah. always try to be as kind as you can. And it just has a way of coming back to you. Yeah, this is something I love this topic. This is, you know, I've had a few guests on with it's in the it's in the realm of like Marie and yourself and a couple other people where it's like, you just don't know what other people are going through. And for me, I realized like 42 now that for a long time, and this is where you get to learn more about me, by the way. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, the, so I realized for a long time and one of my natural modes is being very judgmental. Right. Uh, I'm very judgmental. <laughs> I like to be right. I, you know, it comes from I think partially personality, partially the work I used to do. And what I realized is like, yeah, like, oh, that person shouldn't be doing that or that person should be doing this. And like, what's, why aren't they doing this thing or what's right. up? And like, it's the old saying, like, you never know until you walk a mile in somebody else's shoes. And now that I get to do a much more human work where like sales is very human, but right. it's really a business relationship. Now that I'm doing a lot more networking with people like you, where you get to know people on a personal level, it's a business setting. And also in coaching, it's a business relationship, but right. you get to know people one-on-one. -on -one. I'm like, oh, now I get it. Like, everybody's just right. different. Right. And like what, what, so I have a, a friend who calls it your, um, I think calls it your sphere of your, or your circle of greatness. And it's the thing that, that Casey can do so easily that right. you don't even think it's a thing that you, it takes no require, it takes no energy and it takes no thought for you to do. There's somebody else 
that that's the, that's their worst nightmare or something they literally can't do. And I realize a lot of my sphere of influence things around like, like, you know, like kind of going up to people, networking, um, like technology for me is really, really simple. Mm-hmm. And then I get, and then I get judgmental. I'm like, well, why can't this person set up QuickBooks online? That's so easy. Then you're like, well, no, it's not easy for them. Like if it was easy, they would just do it. Like it's, you so know. I actually did, um, some training, um, in my for- former corporate life. Um, and I, that was one of my biggest takeaways from it, that it's the thing that we that comes so easily to us that aggravates us the most in somebody else. Oh God. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. when oh, you yeah. start realizing that because it comes naturally to you, does not necessarily mean it's going to come naturally to that other person. I think we start or hopefully we start being a little bit kinder about it and the way that we respond to those people. So we talk about this in walking in New York, right? And I sent you that picture last night. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So by the way, a little side note here, one of the things I love about our our master networks group is not, it's just that we're not just there for networking, you know, like we're sending texts to each other during the week. And yes, it's called GIFs, Jason and Mary. (laughs) It's a, uh, um, that's, that's a, a never ending right. debate, but w- we'll settle it on the podcast at some point. Cause I've had this conversation with other people. Yes. Cause I'm a big, I'm a big GIFs fan. So yes. Yes. And remember you taught, you taught me how to get that on my phone. So I did. Um, I did. It's not just about the networking. It's also about like developing these real friendships where we like each other outside of, uh, outside of our Thursday morning at eight 30 meetings. Yeah. So I really like that. Um, where was I going with that anyway? <laughs> um, well, we were just, uh, there's something that you said that <clears throat> I wanted to mention to you that I think was, you'll appreciate. So one of the things that we did in my coaching program, and I've talked about this quite a bit on the show, like the coaching program, and there's 18 of us in the room. Right. We had to do an, we had to do an exercise where you had to look around the room and find the person who triggered you the most. And then you had to write down the things they do that trigger you. Right. And then you had to take a look at that list and be like, what does that mean about me? And it is, and then you're like, oh crap. Like the thing that triggers you the most about somebody is you're like, oh, it's because I actually do that. Or it's because I actually think that. And like the right. thing that, yeah. And so it's like the whole, it was a very, and we didn't, fortunately we didn't like share it with each other. Cause that would have been like, we'd killed each other. But right. it was a very confronting thing to be like, man, what's the thing that annoys me so much. And you're like, Oh boy, because it's it's because it's actually the thing that like if I don't actually outwardly do it, I'm thinking it. I'm like, oh, what does it mean about me when I get triggered by somebody else? Now I remember where I was going. By the way, with that thought, so yeah, it was yeah. that picture of that I sent you about. I heard on uh, your podcast with Marie yesterday, mm-hmm. and it was talking about the tourists in New York. Right, we live in yes. New York City, and the thing that makes that annoys you, you know, and it's the same thing. While I'm from Jamaica, I no longer have that slower mentality. I'm a New Yorker through and through. I've been here for 25 years plus. Um, so I walk fast. So of course, mm-hmm. the thing that's going to annoy me is like when people are slowing down, taking pictures, like, can you, can you move off to the side? Like, I've right. got places to be. Um, right. So yeah, those are things that annoy us about others because, yeah. you know, <laughs> they're friends. <laughs> yeah. Like mama's got money to make. Get out of my way. Like I got, <laughs> I got, move, I got, got people move. to see. Mama's got money to make. Um, so this is the part of the show where you get to describe your journey. So the things we know about you so far is uh, we know you're a mother. You mentioned that at the beginning of the show. Right. You're originally from Jamaica. You've been, in, you've been a, a New Yorker since really it sounds like uh, your teenage years or you've mm-hmm. lived in the United States in your teenage years. So Casey, what would you like to share with, with the audience around your journey to today and then what you're actually up to today? So. I feel like my journey has been, so I moved here. How far back do you want to do? Do you want to start from birth? I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah. Tell us about the hospital you were born in. I spent the first 15 years in Jamaica. Where in Jamaica? Kingston. Everybody knows Kingston. So it's always easier to stay Kingston. So Kingston, uh, till I was 14. And then I moved to a part of the, island called Port Moore, which is in St. Catherine, for the last year that we were there. Um, and there are very humble beginnings, right? But I went to high school there. I finished, I graduated high school in Jamaica. I was 15 when I moved here. Thought I was just too young 
to go to college. So I asked, you know, I asked to go back to high school. They tried to put me back three years, but I had, because I had such a, um, a foundation, they realized that that wasn't going to work, but they said I still needed to be in the school for two years, which I was completely fine with. So ended up graduating top of my class from high school. Couldn't be Oh, I'm so shocked to hear that. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know. Um, you know what? It actually was just stuff that came easy to me. Yeah. And it didn't, it didn't, you know, it helped that I'd already probably done quite a few of those courses in some way before. So couldn't be valedictorian, but they allowed me to do a, a big speech at um uh at graduation, which was nice. And then I went to Queens College on a full scholarship. Nice. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. And thankfully wow. maintained maintained that. So I was able to get an internship and for and if there are any younger people listening in, this was almost 20 years ago now. Wow, did I really say that? Yes, 20 years ago. Um Internships are important because that's where I got my foot in the door to the place that I ended up leaving after two and a half years, going into public accounting, getting my CPA license, and then being offered back a job at the place that I interned two years before. What so it, Casey? Uh, so you're in your college degree. Did you get an accounting degree? Yes, and that's one of the reasons I said, you know what. I wanted to get my CPA license because it's one of those things that you earn it and you never, it, it can never be taken away from you unless you do something really, really bad. Right. Yeah. Um, so my goal was after college to do take all the parts of the CPA exam and I took a paper and pen. So you know how long ago that was. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I failed, I failed on multiple occasions. I know we joke about that, but, I failed multiple tests throughout. And I don't think without failure, you don't really appreciate what you have and the successes that you get when mm-hmm. you get them if you if you never learn how to fail. Yeah. So I was a probably C student for the first couple of years in high school in Jamaica. B C student. Um, it wasn't until my later years that I became more of an A student, came here. So and I think that's probably one of the things that have set me up for more success, being able mm-hmm. to fail. You know, when you fail, it's a matter of what you do with the failure. So I failed multiple parts of exams at different stages of my life. And mm-hmm. it's a matter of, do I want to retake that test or not? And always the answer has been, even reluctantly, yes, I'm going to retake it. Um, uh, so working for a big corporate firm, corp, um, a team, where I worked with ultra high net worth clients for 17 of my 20 years. And then wow. of course the other two years in, in public accounting really set me up to give me this, this depth of knowledge. And while I was working there and seeing what the wealthy do and how we both treat the wealthy clients and the things that we tell them, it really taught me as well. Cause of course I'm not from, um, wealth by any means, but it, mm-hmm. it taught me the fundamentals of how to manage my own money. I have a, I have a couple. I have a couple follow up questions for you on that. Sure. So I hear the term like ultra high net worth individuals. I hear that term quite a bit. What is mm-hmm. what does that actually mean? Is there is that like a is that an industry term or is that more a company get by company term? It's an it's an industry term. So and some places will use a million dollars for your ultra high net worth. The team that I worked with typically was 5 million. And yeah. yeah. So we're talking so, like we're talking top half percent of the United States type of. Uh, yeah. Top 1%. Or, yeah. Top 1%. Yeah. Yeah. So worked with a lot of those clients and I really, really enjoyed my client relationships. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned a lot from them, but also realizing, you know, it's that kindness thing. And most of my clients were super nice. Um, so I don't think it carried the same stereotype of, um, which people aren't nice. I I thought that I had some of the nicest clients in our books and I'll say that. And one of the things that I'm also, and always will say is that I learned a lot from the team Mm -hmm. that I worked with. So I'm just appreciative of the journey, the experience on the financial side, and then 
as I mentioned before, three and a half years ago, I started writing. And again, this was something very reluctant because I'm very, very private. Nobody knows what's going on. And exactly to the point that I made earlier, like you don't know what people are going through. Um, so you just got to be kind to them. And when isn't I that ironic? This, Huh? That we're, isn't this ironic that we are talking about how private you are and you're going to be on a podcast that hundreds and exactly. maybe thousands of people are going to listen to? I love it. Let, let's talk about the fact that I've come a very, 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 very far away. Yes. Right? Thank you, Casey. So Great. thank you. So while I'm so private, I realized that, and is it okay to quote scripture here? Of course. Yes. Cool. So one of the things I struggled with when I felt the call to start writing is that I'm now going to be sharing these very personal stories of my life. And I didn't even know what they were, right? I just knew that all of a sudden I'm going to be writing. And when in college you're told that you have comma slices and run on sentences and whatever else, now I'm putting my work out there, not just for the professor to grade, but for whomever who's going to read this to see that I have these flaws in my writing. So I had to get over that. Um, mm -hmm. And I felt like I was sent to Exodus about mm -hmm. Moses making up all his excuses mm -hmm. multiple times. And I still came up with all the excuses. But as reluctant as I was to write, I felt the call to write was greater than all my excuses. Eventually ran out of excuses. And kind of the way it works. Uh, <laughs> like when it's kind of the way it works. That's been my experience too, when you're called to do something. So right. for, people that are spiritual, if it's God calling you or if just like the universe, whatever you believe it's right. like at some point, if it's really your thing you're supposed to do at some point, you're like, yeah, I got nothing left that tells me I can't yeah, do this. Yeah, I'm out of excuses. One of them was like, I don't know how to start a blog. I'm where you're technology, technologically, you know, sophisticated. I'm like, computer, why aren't you working? Why aren't <laughs> you working? Right. Um, and my former colleagues that are right across the, um, from me, and we were pretty good friends. Um, that's one of the things I also enjoyed my, about my team. I had pretty good friends, still do. And it's like God said, okay, your colleague has a blog. She has how many hundreds of thousands of followers or whomever. Go talk to her on how to create a blog. Yeah. Okay, so that was, I think, the last straw of my excuses. And I said I wanted to do that. It started on my mom's birthday. And it wasn't until the end of the day that I was walking into the restaurant with her to celebrate her birthday. And I'm like, mommy, I started a vlog today. And I remember just like distinctly like, oh my gosh, two weeks ago, I said, I was going to start on your birthday, but I was trying to push it out another two weeks because I wasn't ready. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. But here it is, June 14th, 2016, that I've started the blog. And so, as I said, it's three and a half years later, I did it. And the stories that I get, from it now i've published a book in in the meantime or in the interim and i'm working on book number two and i'm just like this is all very crazy so yeah. one of the things that i've learned is um sometimes you have to just step out on faith and by the way my book is called walking by faith and not by sight um learning to be still in the midst of life's chaos so i'm divorced i'm a single mom and of course, you can imagine corporate woman, career woman, my life can be very chaotic. And then God called me to be still. And I'm like, but, but, but God, like how, how are we going to do this? Yeah. And it's in those moments of slowing down and being still that the thoughts came. I would wake up at two o'clock with a thought to write. I would write it, go back to bed and wake up at six or seven o'clock and reread it and it actually made sense. And I'm like, what? Um, so. Sometimes you just have to step out of that fear mm -hmm. and do the thing that we've been called to do and watch, you know, watch what happens next. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I know you're creating all sorts of amazing stuff. You're um, like the blog. We might talk. Uh, and I'm going to out you a little bit. You're a published author as well, which um, right. we, we don't need to talk about because you might be embarrassed by it. But we'll yeah, just uh, give you a shout out. You are a published author and you're, it seems like you're really creating the career you want as well and doing the, the thing that makes a difference with people's lives as an entrepreneur now working right, uh, you know you. working for yourself which is amazing so congratulations on everything you've done and everything you're up to and so uh, like, but let me add yeah. one thing to that of course um i think also in that first step of stepping out and doing the crazy thing of writing and sharing um 
and I wanted to have a traditional publishing deal, right? Who doesn't? But I felt like, and there are some crazy stories behind that too, but I felt like God said, I don't want the traditional publishing realm. I want you to mm. publish. And I'm like, but that's going to be hard. You know, that's going to be doing everything myself and doing whatever else. And I'm, I was like, yep, this is the way. But I was introduced just through the craziest way of the person who would help me to self-publish, walked me through it, never asked for a dollar. And shout out to Paula Blackwell, because I'm still completely amazed by her that she helped me without asking for anything in return. And sometime after, I felt like God said, now it's time for a change as I was sitting at my desk at work. And I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Right? Mm -hmm. And it's in the times when we step out and we do that crazy thing that we've been called to do that God said, ah, oh, now I can show you the next crazy thing I want you to do. Mm. But because mm -hmm. you've seen and you've experienced the first crazy thing and you've done it, now I'm ready to trust you to do that next crazy thing. So I love that. Yes, it's only because I've done the first number of crazy things that I'm able to step out and be an entrepreneur and watch how my life has changed and been transformed as a result. Oh man. And what and I'm thinking crazy is people like you and meeting crazy, cool. crazy people like me on a crazy podcast. I'm just thinking for you, like, man, what's next? Like you had a massive journey the last few years and taken some bold, bold steps. Like, um, like I'm not a writer, but even doing a podcast, it's like a weird thing to put their, like your baby out into the world. And you're like, Oh my gosh, people can like listen to Casey and I talking today. People are going to read your devotional. People are right. going to see your blog. And you're like, Oh my God, people are going to judge. People are going to have they're going to love it. They're going to hate it. They're, you're going to get feedback on it. It's like a crazy thing. And then the fact that you did all of that, and then you're like, okay, now I'm going to leave uh, a really job that's pretty secure at a really great firm and like make a difference as an entrepreneur. Like, whoa, like, so I don't even, maybe, maybe we'll be talking in a year on the show again. I'll have you back on and you'll say like, you're, you're going to be on Oprah or something. I don't know. Like <laughs> who knows what's up who don't, or whoever it is you want to be on, who, what, whatever's next for you. It's amazing. So uh, yeah, I just want to tell you, I, I admire greatly the things that you're up to, the things you're creating and, and trusting in yourself and what you're feeling from your spirituality to like go out and actually take that chance, knowing that it's going to be okay then you're, and that you're going to be okay. Thanks. I appreciate that. And sometimes like, I don't know that it's going to be okay, right? I yeah. don't have that um, crystal ball that we all want to have that it's going to be okay. But guess what? If you don't try and fail, I told you I'm okay with failing, right? The yeah. worst thing is to look back in 10 or 20 years and look back and say, I should have done this thing and not do it, right? Yeah. I think that's worse than me jumping out of the, the secure world that I lived in and to be in this place now and not experiencing what I'm experiencing. I've just had such an incredible last seven months of being independence and meeting new people and the partners that I work with and the people I come in contact with and the lives that I can change, not just talking about finance, but talking about faith and being able to, if I'm so inclined on one of my client calls, to pray with somebody because I feel like there's something that mm -hmm. we need to, to pray through before we start addressing something. Mm -hmm. And it gives me like the sense of humility, right? To be able yeah. to have a call where we're talking about the things that are super important, um, but to be able to stop and step back and say, um, to invite God's presence into it. And yeah. also when either my clients or my prospects, I followed up with quite a few people and I give a lot of free advice before, you know, I, I like to have that consulting call and I'm giving advice and, you know, I'm following up, which, which is a good, and a, I, I don't know if it's a not, not so good thing, but I'm like reaching out and they're like, oh, you said I need to do this. So I'm doing this first step first before we, you know, we go to the next step. And I'm like, people are listening and they're taking those steps. You know, they want to work with me, but they may delay working with me because they feel like they need to get to a certain place. Yeah. And I can get to that, help them get to that place faster. But the fact that they're listening and they're making steps and they're, they're taking action almost right away just gives my heart so much happiness and joy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So shifting gears a little bit, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit scared of this next topic. Ooh, I, okay. If you're scared, I'm even more scared. <laughs> no, I think you're going to be delighted by this next topic. 
So this is the part of the show where you get to ask me anything and I'm going to, and I, you're, uh, you're the host and I'm on the hot seat now. And uh, I'm not really scared because I've, I've had a few questions I've had answered, but the offer to you is, uh, mm-hmm. Casey, what would you like to ask me that I can answer for yourself and for the audience today? You know what? I'm, while I, I, I told you that there are some topics that were like completely off guard, it was off guard for me, but does not mm-hmm. mean it's off guard for you. Um, well, I so could say I'm no, hopeless. but probably won't. <laughs> I'm a hopeless romantic, right? Yes. Behind everything else. Um, how did you meet your why? Oh, I love this question. I... I shared this on an episode with another person who's not out yet, and I'm going to share it again because I love this story. Right. So, uh, so I met my wife through the most New York story possible. And every mm-hmm. time I tell this story, people are like, ah, and I'm not really much, I think it, I'm not really much of an ah person. I'm not really mm-hmm. a big, as Marie and I talk about, we don't like being in our feelings. Um, but this story is, is awesome. So I was dating uh, a, a lovely young lady whose name, I won't say her name, but um, it started with a K and it was, uh, it was a, a common K name. It's definitely not Casey. <laughs> Def, uh, Casey, are, Casey and I are not the persons who were dating 20, uh, like 15 years ago. No, not Casey. <laughs> but um, so, and we were dating and we had, uh, my roommate at the time, I lived on the Upper East Side at 96 and 3rd. And my girlfriend at the time lived on the Upper East Side as well. And as, as you know, in this area of the country, if anybody's ever watched Sex in the City, or there's like always jokes about like, you kind of need to live kind of close to each other to make it work. Like what, what I didn't really understand coming from the Midwest when I moved out here is like, if you live in the financial district and your girlfriend lives in, let's say, Queens, <laughs> that's a really challenging commute. Like we're talking about an hour and so it's a commute. Yeah, it's, it's a tough commute. So my roommate was moving with his girlfriend uh, out, to, out, of the, out of the state. And so I needed to find a new place to live. So I w- always had wanted to live in the village. This is my third year in New York City. and I, uh, Actually, my second year in New York City. And I'd always wanted to live in the village. Mm-hmm. So I decided, like, hey, we're moving out of the Upper East Side. I'm going to go on Craigslist and find something in the village. And I found this really cool loft with a, a really cool roommate who I had at the time. and. I just moved in there. Like I just found it and moved in. And well, the best part about that apartment, there's a lot of good things about it. But the best thing about that apartment is we had a 400 square foot deck on the inside of the building, an outdoor space that was phenomenal. And like, I didn't know this sort of thing existed in New York city. It was amazing. So what do I do? Me and the social butterfly, I throw a party the first weekend. <laughs> My friend, John and his girlfriend, Jillian come to the party. And invite their friend, whose name is very, very similar to my girlfriend's name at the time. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriend was there. Mm -hmm. Party was amazing. And I ended up spending a lot of time talking to my not girlfriend, whose name begins with a K. My my wife's name is Kirsten. So it's a very, very similar thing. I'll leave Mm -hmm. it at that. And we end up having a good time, but there's like no like, like I'm with this other person. And we're just talking. We're having a good time. My girlfriend and I break up the next day. Mm. Not, because, not because of my future wife, but just partially the move. It, it, like, it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the thing. It Is wasn't the right thing. Is that commute from the upper side to... It was, I wish I could say it was a commute. It was probably a lot more about me just being an a-hole. <laughs> so, which I will fully admit to. It was not, not ideal. Um, mm. So, yes, yeah, so we actually bro- broke up the next day pretty much mutual it made it made sense like it wasn't it was not a long-term relationship right. it, it just wasn't and so i threw a party that i throw a party the next weekend again <laughs> outdoor space amazing it's like june in new york city it's awesome and Kirsten comes back again with her friends and like there was no like she's a very wholesome lovely lady i mean obviously married her um but it, there was no like there was no like um you know like anything other than just like, oh, it was a fun party, cool person, like cool space, let's go back to the party again. So this party was amazing. And we started talking and we actually connected again. And then at one point it was my party that I was throwing and there's probably 30 or 40 people there. I remember saying like, hey, like, do you want to get some ice cream? And she's like, well, no, I don't really like ice cream, but I like frozen yogurt. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, I like frozen yogurt better than I like ice cream too. And so we walked across the street to the deli. We just like talked a little bit, came back. 
And then I said to my buddy, John, who um, his now wife, Jillian, was best friends with Kirsten. And I remember saying to him, I'm like, hey, Kirsten's really cool. Like, do you like, could I get her number? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. And like, there was no, it wasn't like one of the things like, oh, like she said she liked you too. It wasn't like that. It was just like a, let let me, let me, let me get, let me get aggressive here. Let me, let me go after it. And so, you know, we, we connected again and I I think I emailed her, texted her. I'm like, hey, do you want to get together sometime? So she said, yes, obviously. And we went out and our first date was at a place that's now called JG Mellon. It's at uh, Bleecker and McDougal in the mm-hmm. West, in the West Village, a really cool spot. And I'll never forget we're sitting down, and she's like, my wife's very like not she's not aggressive, but she's also like friendly, very social, very fo- like she's not like a she's not like you, Casey, super shy. <laughs> exactly, because I'm super super shy. <laughs> super shy, nothing to say at all. And um, so we're sitting down and you know, like, I'm very not shy. And I sit down, I'm like, hey, like, I'm like, hey, so glad we get together. I'm like, don't you want to ask me? And she's like, yeah, I want to ask you. She's like, what's up? Like, you were with this other person 10 days ago that I met. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I can, you know, like, I wanted to talk to you about that. Like, it, it wasn't really good. We were on our last legs with it. You know, this is kind of a transition. And I right. said, like, I really liked our conversation. I just wanted, I wanted to get to know you. Right. And so we ended up, um, we had a we had a really fun dinner like we had like it was a really like empowered honest conversation which wasn't my natural mode at that point in my late 20s as a male in new york city (laughs) and because i that's actually what's funny is i actually had these dreams of like not of being single living in the village of this apartment and having like this like awesome bachelor life in new york city like you see on on tv right and all these things like no it didn't happen at all so we we went from there. We went to this place called The Dove, which is no longer there. It's on Thompson Street in the village. Also, super cool little bar. And she was, Kirsten wasn't drinking at the time because she was training for the New York Marathon, New York City mm. Marathon. She's in like super health mode. And then we just had a good time. And um, we went out then. We saw each other a couple more times. And I think it was our fourth date where we were both like, yeah, we're going to get married. Like, it was like that sort of thing. Aww. Yeah. So from there, you know, like we've, never i've never dated anybody else we were dating for 11 months got engaged um we actually got engaged in the caribbean we got engaged in the dominican republic nice um, not not quite jamaica but dominican and then we got you married. know that's where um that's where ramona's from that's where ramona's from yeah she's dominican mm-hmm. I'll, t- I'll have to tell her that story sometime and then and then a year later we got married in the dominican republic so nice yeah, so we went from I went from having a girlfriend with a name almost like my wife's name to married in two years, and I didn't see it happen. So that's how we did it. So we met at a party at my apartment in the village, which I think is a pretty cool New York City story. Of course, that totally is. Yeah. That's so yes, cool. and we've been and yeah. Now I've, I've mentioned this a few times. I've talked about her on the show. We've been married for um, we'll be celebrating eleven years in May, <clears throat> May second. Congratulations! Had, yeah, we actually had two weddings. We got married here in the city, right. uh, at Long in Long Island City. Okay because we're not catholic and in dominican really all you can get is like a catholic priest right i also didn't want to worry about if we ever needed our marriage license calling the dominican government being like hey uh you know and we don't speak spanish either so right um so yes yeah, so we got married legally here in new york city on Lo- in long island city and then we got married by our pastor and then we got married um our ceremony with like our destination wedding was in the dominican so that's how we met and that's where we're at and we're going on 11 years come may and a kid to boot. Turn and a kid to boot. We now ha- we have a. I've talked about our our daughter as well. She's she'll be four years old in a couple of weeks. So yes, we've Listen, we've created it, a little human. Uh, yes, um, daughters are a lot of fun, but let me tell you, they have their personalities. <sighs> it's already it's sure. already completely the case. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for the question. I'm always happy to share that story. That was that was painless. That one's not bad. No. I- I like easy questions and I'm really, really such a hopeless romantic. Do I get to ask another one? You can do one more. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm very ambitious. Come on. You know this already. Of course. Um, why did you decide to start this podcast? Um, it's pretty simple. Mm-hmm. When I was little, my dream was to be Johnny Carson. Okay. <laughs> I met Johnny Carson. And then when I was growing up, it became Jay Leno. So I think Johnny Carson retired and Jay Leno. Right. My dream is to like talk to cool people. Like, oh, how fun would it be to have people come on a show and like we just have a great conversation about whatever. 
And then as I got older, I thought about how I wanted to make it a little more personal. Like I, you know, I don't, I think the secret, not so secret is when you go on like Jimmy Fallon or something, Mm -hmm. the person's publicity agent's like, here's the five questions you can ask Christian Bale. And then it was like, oh, my new movie is this. And I, you know, like, and and they have like these kind of prepared sound bites, which is, it's still fun, but I wanted to make it more improvisational and make it more almost like, um, like Larry King or something where like you get Mm -hmm. people that come on and you can get deep and get vulnerable. You have fun, like all that stuff. And then in October, I was on this super cool pod, podcast called Jim Jim's Revolution. Mm-hmm. And it's about, I was a guest in the, and it's about people that are making career transitions and it's kind of coupled with technology. So I was like, perfect guest. I'm right. so a technologist who's also made a career transition. And I got done. I'm like, hey, this is so fun. And then I remember, I'll never forget, I was talking to my coach, Oren, if you're listening. My coach's name is Oren. He's amazing. Uh, Oren Hode, H O D. He, um, he's like, well, what do you want to create the rest of your I'm like, I'm going to do a podcast. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna start a podcast. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay. And, and co- what coaches we do is like, okay, what by when? So I've got right. what by when I'm like, I'm going to launch it January 5th. Right. He's like, he's like, okay. He's like, what do you need from me? I'm like, just hold me accountable. Right. So like, I literally um, created this podcast from like a glimmer in my eye, as I call it. And right. I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday it's been such a blur that I don't actually remember how I got my first guest. I don't remember how right. I came up, how came up with a flow. I vaguely remember picking up the technology I used to do it, but it's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever had this where I think I was in such a flow and it's such a thing that I love doing right. that I don't really remember the details. And so then here we are today. So yeah, like it was just, it's an example of what, what could be possible for me. Like two years ago, like you said, you know, I never imagined we'd be here on a podcast, Right. If you would have told me a year ago I'd be the president of a networking group on a podcast with somebody, I'd be like, "What are you? No, like, what are you talking about? That's like, <laughs> no, like, no, that's not. Not only is that possible, what's the point? What's the money? And like, right. and now I'm like, hey, like, I actually have the power to create whatever I want and do it out of a place of fun and spirit and light and creating good energy in the world. And I have no idea where it's going to go, but you know, I literally created this from a. And the other thing that I should mention is, is might be obvious to the listeners. <laughs> listening to some of my earliest episodes, I have no idea. I, I, I don't know anything about, I knew nothing about podcasting. I know right. how to listen to them, but I'm like, Hmm, what do you need? Well, you need a, so I'm like, Hey, what do you need? I'm like, here's some microphone. What else do you need? Like Google that? Like, Oh, okay. I'm like, I can set all that up. And I just literally have created it all from scratch. Like it's all just my own, it's my own baby I birthed. And it's now it's growing with each episode. It's growing, which is really fun. So, you know, and, and it totally resonates with me. Like, where you say it's a blur. So I don't know if it's a complete blur for me, but being able to write consistently for three and a half years, I I checked my posts at the end of the year because I, I wanted to write a topic on being consistent about something. And by the way, I, I do have a podcast. I started it in the midst of leaving my corporate company and I, that was just a crazy thing. So I only did a few episodes on it. Um, and they were like short, like really short episodes. Um, mm-hmm. But it's that showing up consistently to the thing that you're doing and all of a sudden watching it grow from the thing that you never even thought was possible, right? Yeah. To being able to do all the things that you're able to do because you've taken and moved with one step at a time. And yeah. I read something recently, like, what do you do when you don't know what, to, what next to do? You do the next best thing, yeah. right? Um, So that's become a huge thing for me. And sometimes I don't know what the next thing is to do, Um, Mm -hmm. but I I take a pause. um, And for me, I pray about it and continually pray about stuff um, as to what's my next step? What should I be doing? How should I be doing this? Um, And like you, for me, Google is my best friend. So I Google a lot of things. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the thing is, the thing is in some ways we're trailblazers, but we're actually not like how many people have left big financial firms to do their own thing. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, how many people have started a podcast? Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, like you don't have to trailblaze much of anything anymore because somebody's done it. And Google between Google and masterminds and community groups, like it's all out there. You just have to, but you have to be willing to try. I think the, the thing that Marie, you know, we're talking about our mutual friend, Marie, you know, Marie's episode released yesterday on uh, January 16th, amazing episode. The quote that she leaves the audience with is, you know, you can't, you can't be good until you're bad. 
Uh, I mean, you can't be great until you're good. You can't be good until you're bad. And you can't be bad until you try. Like, you just got to go and do it. Like, I don't know, like this episode, you know, like I'm like, I've declared this to some people I'll declare here on the show. Like I'm doing a hundred episodes this year. I've got enough, I've got enough people who want to be on that I'm going to release every single week starting this week until the end of the year, two episodes a week. That's a lot to do to go from zero to a hundred episodes is a lot to do, but I love it. And I'm going to do it. You know what? It's pretty awesome. And I think not to compare and by this, by no means is a comparison, but that's what I did. The first year I wrote, I wrote and posted three times a week Mm -hmm. um, for a year. And can you imagine like what that looks like when you multiply it out and you do it consistently? By the way, I said I was going to um, quote scripture and I didn't, but you just triggered the memory again. Ecclesiastes 1 9, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. So if you're afraid to do something, and this might be my quote, right? There's, if if you're afraid to do something, there really is nothing new. And the thing that you're afraid that somebody's going to judge you about, people are going to judge you whether you do it or you don't, right? So you might as well do the thing and do the thing that's going to, um, I think, make you happy while not hurting others. Yeah, well, just to wrap on this one, this topic, there's a really cool saying that I'll, work with clients sometimes it's like kind of can sometimes snap people out of their like stories Mm -hmm. is um why not you and why not now what is it what is it about you that like there's nothing under the sun like there's a lot of people who have done what casey's doing and if they can do it you've already told us that you're wildly brilliant very likable like you know your stuff like there's no reason you can't do it the only reason people in my opinion most people don't get to where they want is it's all about themselves and i i'm i'm also a very good example of for years of like limiting beliefs about what I actually can do or not do. It's fair. And yeah, that's it. Fair. So fair, ba- fair plays a big part of it. Um, and I think being afraid to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, I don't know. Some people go, Oh, this podcast stinks. Like, okay. Well, like, do I really, I mean, do I care? Yeah, of course I care. I want people to like it. And I like, I want people mm-hmm. to like it, but it's also like, what some people failure, like I'll, then that I'll get a text from like, Hey, I listened to that episode and made me cry with the message that Casey, you know, spoke about really made me cry. I'm like, that's all worth it. So. Right. Um, and guess what? You're not going to please everyone. Nope. And then the beauty of podcasts or blogs or books is don't read it. Don't listen to it. I don't really actually care. Like it's right. I don't, <laughs> I'm not expecting the whole you know world to listen right. to the podcast or not. Yeah. It's like, I was like, go find a blog you want to listen to, go find a podcast you want to listen to. There's plenty right. people exactly. who, want to, who want to stuff. It's great. Um, well, thank you for the two questions. Those are both uh, fun and cool topic. And I have yeah, never shared the story of the podcast, so thank you. Um, so we've got a, I've got a couple more questions for you if you've got a couple more minutes for, for us. Sure. All right. So Casey, what's the thing you're most proud of? It's not a thing. It's my, it's my little me. Um, mm-hmm. My Amelia, she is just such a blessing. Mm-hmm. She is seven, and the conversations that we're able to have is incredible. She's like this little old lady. Uh, <laughs> she keeps me. She really is. You have to meet her one of these days. I will. But she's like this little old lady with her wisdom and her kindness. I pray for her kindness and the wisdom all the time. But one of the sweetest compliments I got recently, one of her friends. Um, is very very shy you talk about shy she she used to be very shy when she came to the school and I walked in and they're always saying hi Miss Casey and um, we're all gathered and like I think three little girls by the way they act like teenagers now at seven. Oh god yeah um, oh, so yeah. wish me all the best four years old too exactly and one of the little kids said something and this particular girl she she stood up for herself and she said something and I texted her mom afterwards and I am like I'm so, I'm so happy to see where your daughter is coming from, you know, um, because we all know that she's shy. And she's like, why do you say that? And I'm like, it's not anything that I can really articulate. It's just like the growth that I've seen in her. And the mom responded, she's, she, she just was so appreciative of my daughter's influence in her daughter's life. You know, that at seven, she's already being a leader and she's already empowering others to to kind of stand up for themselves and to do um that thing for themselves so yeah that's amazing she makes me super happy yeah so it's funny because every any question i've ever asked this to of a parent is always their child 
really? Okay. And it's, it's funny because most parents are like, oh, it's super corny or, oh, I know it's cliche. I'm like, yeah, but like every parent says that. That's what I, that's what I, that's basically what I said when somebody asked me the same question. So yeah. for those of you who don't have children and are considering, and that should probably tell you something. Right. No, my, my kid is, and everybody says this, but my kid is pretty amazing. She and really is the best. She truly is the best kid out there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. You know, you can say that for yourself, but for me, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so a little bit different type of question. This is something where maybe get a little bit vulnerable with you if you're up for it, which I, I think at this point, we're, we're in a good place to do that. So Casey, what is, what's something that you are afraid might actually be true about you? I'm afraid might actually be true about me. Hmm. That's a hard one. Um, do you always ask these hard questions? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Um, you're not. You're not special today. You're being treated like everybody else. Oh man, I am super <laughs> special. You are. Uh, special. That would be it. That I'm not special. That mm. would be it. Um, but ask me the question again. Yeah. What's something that you were afraid might actually be true about you? So I'll say this, and this goes back many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so when I started um, my corporate life, I was sent to financial advisor training. And one of the things that the guy said would be, was uh, I would be, I gave advice. I, I shared the things that I had learned too easily, basically. Mm. And mm -hmm. that people would take that and use it. Um, to their advantage and to my disadvantage. Mm. Um, so it's funny over the years, while it, it's true, um, people, I think they, I found it to be more of an advantage and it hasn't changed who I am. It, also, mm -hmm. it, it makes me think about it, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm, I'm nice. I'm going to give you advice and I'm going to still show up and be, be nice to you. Even when I know some things that you think I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so I have a second part of this question that I think will also be thought provoking and you've covered a little bit of it already, but this is always a surprise. Mm -hmm. So what do you do to compensate for that fear? What do you, what do you do to push that fear to the side or, you know, compensate for it? Cause that's the way we work as humans, right? You have this thing you believe about yourself. Right? Yeah. And then we you do, you do. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, and it has been a, a lifelong or my adult lifelong thing is that I will still show up and be who I am because it goes back to that kindness thing that I really believe. I truly, truly believe it that, but whatever it is that you give away that that's kind and whether it's a part of you or give a, giving away money or whatever else, it just has a way of coming back to you. So I actually go out of my way to be nice to people even when they don't think it. And I told you I'm writing book number two. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, the topic was kindness begets kindness. So I'll, I'll share this story. Yeah. Um, and this is in my book, will be in book number two. And it talks about the day I went to get a banana for myself from the office pantry. And I know that my colleague liked bananas. And I went and I saw really... He doesn't know how to choose. He did not know how to choose good bananas. I'm from the island. <laughs> yeah, right? come on. So I picked up a banana for him and I like made this whole big show about presenting it to him and whatever else, you know, that's your banana. And it's a very simple thing, right? Mm -hmm. And the next day, um, <clears throat> as it usually happened, the pantry would be running low on seltzer. And he knew I liked flavored seltzer. And what does he do? This is somebody who would never in his own mind think to do something like this. He grabs me about a can of seltzer. Nice. And he came in and he's like, look what I got. And he was so happy to, to do that thing, right? Because it was, um, I had shown kindness to him the day before. So yeah. he reciprocated the next day. Beautiful. And so while it, it's not the norm or may not be the, the second nature thing, because somebody extends it, you're, you, you go a little bit out of your way to do the same. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Thank you. 
Well, we're about out of time, but I do want to ask you a couple more things. Sure. So the first thing is, you know, after, you know, we're going to have a lot of people listening to this episode, I'm sure that they'll want to connect with you, learn more about you as a person, read your blog, um, maybe even find out about the kind of work you do in the financial planning arena. So where can people find you and connect with you, Casey? So I am on Facebook and my name is uniquely spelled. It's Casey Ann Gordon, K-A-Y-S-I-A-N, Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N. Um, that's Facebook. LinkedIn is the same. Um, I'm a wealth advisor, so it makes me a little bit easier to mm-hmm. find. And as you like to tease me, I have all those credentials. <laughs> yeah, like if you, yeah. Like, connect I'm to our LinkedIn. Super. Yeah. Um, I'm also, as I mentioned, an author and my website because I'm very, very creative. Uh, that was one of the things that was so laughable um, when God asked me to write. I'm like, but I don't have a creative bone in my body. So mm-hmm. guess what my website is? My name, it's Casey, K-A-Y-S-I-G-O-R-D-O-N.com. Simply yeah. that, CaseyGordon.com. Yeah. Oh, great. And I, uh, obviously, I will also leave those in the show notes. Please do connect with Casey, as you could probably tell me now, she is an amazing human being. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't quickly uh, talk about the letters behind your name. And I want to see if I get this right, because I'm not looking at LinkedIn. So <laughs> let me, let me and, and bear with me. So you mentioned you're a CPA, so Certified Public Accountant. Right. You, have an M, you have an MBA, so Master's in Business Administration. Right. I, I know you just got, I think it's CFDA, Certified no, CDFA, is it Certified Divorced Financial Analyst, analyst. or yeah. yes. Analyst? And then there's, and then you're a, uh, is it a CFP, Certified Financial Planner? I am, that's impressive. And I just realized that I did not give you my way to contact me professionally. Okay. Uh, my email is kgordon, um, K-G-O-R-D-O-N, at claris, C-L-A-R-U-S, financial.com. Awesome. So wait, did I get all the letters right the first time? You did. Wow. You did, but so, I think you forgot to mention, those are the letters behind my name, behind but you forgot name. to mention all the other things that I do. I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> no, of course. Well, so the last question I'm going to leave you with before, um, before we wrap up here is, Wait. what are the next letters that are coming behind your name? Because there's obviously going to be more. Like, I've, is there something else coming? Really? I, my business card can't hold anything else. <laughs> Your 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 limit your limit to your educational credentials is your. I'm, I'm is your... maxed out because my business card. Um, <laughs> as awesome. I figured out, and you know, through using my own coach, and I can't tell you how invaluable coaches are, um, especially well, a good one. Yeah. Um, are I figured out that I'm a high learner, and I just liked learning, and that's the mm-hmm. thing that kind of you know drove me and allowed me to do the things that I do. I just enjoyed learning. And I- enjoy learning in a classroom or whether yeah. it's learning more and googling some project or topic that's abstract to what anyone else would be thinking um yeah. that's the thing that drives me so yeah 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 i'm similar I, like my i don't have it on my linkedin now but my coaching also has like a lot of letters and it's actually kind of silly how many letters i could put behind my name and, and most of them are like they mean something but they're not right. you know it's like at the end of the day at the end of the day like i would not hire you I'm not going to hire a financial planner because they have all the letters. I'm going to hire them because I connect with them and I think they understand me. And like you said, right. they're asking, they're trying to, they're trying to help me not even solve a problem, but like, not like throw a bunch of products at me. It's the same thing in coaching. Right. You can, you can find coaches with all sorts of letters. Although there are certain letters behind a coach's name, which really demonstrates skill and the fact that they can grow a big practice. But right. there's coaches out there that have all these things. And like, if you don't connect with them, you're not going to hire them. It doesn't matter how experienced they are. So, exactly. Same thing <laughs> in the same, financial world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I, and I know we've run across in our networking things together. Like sometimes you run into people and you're like, I know you say you do this and I'm sure you do this, but I'm not, would not hire you. Like, just <laughs> do, do you remember that one meeting that we had? We're like, um, yeah, mm, okay. Yeah, mm, it's okay yeah, if you don't no. come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For those coming, like if you come into our master networks meeting, we're very selective. Yeah. We're not that selective, but we, we, we like to protect our turf a little bit, but we, we would love to have you. Right. So oh, I was going to be vice president, but I decided on a better role that was going to challenge me in that's an right. area. Right. That's right. That's, so right. that's I, the whole idea. I like my new role. And I think, I, actually, I think I'm doing well. You're doing really well. You're doing, yeah, you're, you're killing it. So, um, so Casey, thank you so much for being on today. Uh, the last tradition I have in the show is I love if a guest would leave all of us, audience, myself, and you with words of wisdom. And you've already like done a lot of that today, but words of wisdom. And they need to fit on a post-it note. So what would the words of wisdom you want to leave us with be? 
You know what? Um, I think I'm going to go back to the, the one that we just talked about. We've talked about it a couple of times before. So mm -hmm. this is by Court Flint. And it says, it is difficult to give away kindness. It keeps coming back to you. And I think that's super, super important as um, we go into the world and we encounter different people who are going through various struggles and we don't know what those struggles are and mm -hmm. they show up and we don't necessarily see it, um, but they have to deal with it in their own heads. And typically when you stay in your, stay in your own head, the problem becomes more magnified. So just yeah. be kind. Amazing. I love it. Thank you so much, Casey. Thank you again Thank for being you, on. It was awesome to catch up with you, and I'm sure we'll be seeing each other very soon. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Thanks. All right. Thanks for listening to another episode of Talking to Cool People with me, Jason Frizzell. Enjoyed today's episode? Please tell your friends, give us a shout out and a follow on Facebook and Instagram, and take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes. If something from this episode has piqued your interest and you'd like to connect about it, please email us at podcast at jasonfrizzell.com. We love hearing from our listeners.